Hello and welcome. This bird is inspired by a purple martin. But what I really want to talk about today is making a slow stitching piece that you want to frame with a nice border. In this case, I've used black cord. The second thing I want to talk about is adding beads. Sometimes it's nice to just add a little something extra to a stitched piece. And the final section is a bonus. See how I finished this piece. I'm going to start with a fast motion process of creating the stitching on this fabric collage and then move right ahead to the border and the beads. So let's start with a sped up process of creating this slow stitched piece. Then we'll move into couching on the border and adding beads. If you're looking to go into more detail on creating the fabric collage and the stitching behind it, please check out my other videos. I'll put links below. I have several videos that go in detail and they're extended versions of creating a slow stitched piece like this. Please check those out if you want to see that process in greater detail. For today, I'm going to focus on the border and the beads. Let's get started. So I've already created a collage and I've gone across it with slow stitching lines to secure everything. Then I'm going to start coming in with different colored floss and stitching down patches and making marks all around the piece. I'm continuing to add mark and color. I've added this pink color, which matches the patches here. And then I've added some of the light green that matches this green. And I heavily stitched in a turquoise color here and here. So my process is to move around the piece, adding stitches to the border and the background, mostly using straight stitches. And I continue to add marking with line, marking with color, adding and adding layer upon layer until the background is very colorful, full of lines and satisfying. Now it's time to add the border. I've used a stiffer cord. It, it's more substantial than yarn. And so because of that, I can sew right through it as I couch it on. So I start by securing my thread at the back and taking a stitch through both the piece and the cord. Then I flip it over and I'm gonna begin my blanket stitch. So I'm going through the edge of the piece with the blanket stitch, so there's a knot at the top every time. And then I'm taking my needle and I'm going up through the piece and through the cording, straight up through, and then making that blanket stitch. So it's always knotting at the top with the blanket stitch. So I just make sure that my thread is behind where my needle's coming through. And I take that stitch that goes all the way through both pieces. And with my other hand, I'm holding the cord in place. And I just continue to check that I'm not pulling it too tight, that I'm holding it exactly where I want it to lay. And I just move my way up the side of the piece until I get to the corner. Now when I'm at the corner, it's not too, too different. I just want to be careful that I'm not pulling anything too tight. So I'm making sure that it's right up against the edge, not pulling. And I take a few extra stitches at the corner just to make sure it's secure. And then I move on to the next side. And I continue in the same way, taking a stitch through both my piece and the cord. And when I come to the end, I cut the extra cord that I don't need. I take a little extra time to secure this end piece. I, I start folding it over as I stitch. And I just take stitches, some of them blanket stitches, some of them just regular straight stitches, whatever works to secure that little piece that's fraying and tuck it under and join it to the starting point. So I just keep stitching away until it's really secure. And I like the way it looks visually and I feel that it's secure and it's not gonna fray. So this takes a little bit of extra time working on the back. 
securing that piece down and flattening it and just making sure that it's really going to stay in place. Now that cording is secure, it's a nice black border. I'm liking the way it looks. So I'm turning my attention to beads. These are just tiny seed beads and they add a little something extra. I use two different colors here. Sometimes that's a fun thing to do, to punch up a piece a bit. So what I'm doing here is auditioning beads. I'm just taking a few out and I'm pouring them on top of my piece and seeing what stands out and what I think looks good. And from this process, I end up settling on just two colors of beads. I've pulled out my sewing thread and I've chosen two colors that I think will blend well with the beads and not show up too much. And I start to stitch the beads on one by one. So I'm starting here with a little line of beads and looking at them and deciding how I feel they look. They're feeling a little bit loose. So I'm going back through with my needle through all of them and stitching one line to secure them. So I've used this one color in this upper area of the piece and I'm really liking the way it looks. And I've gone along the very top and added the other color of beads. And now I want to add the other color of beads in the bottom area. So here are my darker pink beads on the bottom. I can have a look here on, on white and they show up really well. And I'm really happy with the way it's looking. A question I get asked a lot is, what do you do with these pieces when they're done? Well, first of all, I wanna say, these pieces don't have to have a function. They're beautiful and it's enjoyable to make them. And that's enough. I have another video where I show how I attach a backing and a hanging wire or string for hanging these pieces. So you can take a look at that. In this case, I'm gonna do something new. This is four by four inches or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And so is this little canvas that I have. It's quite thick. It's one and a half inches thick or about four centimeters. And this piece fits perfectly on it. So what I've done is I've painted it black on the sides and onto the front and I'm going to glue it on. Then it's going to be a piece of art for the wall. The way I'm going to do that is by using gel medium. The one I have today is TriArt. That's a Canadian company. Two other brands that I know of that I've used that are good are Golden and Liquitex. Gel medium can be used as a glue. It's in sort of a thick gel form. It's used in painting. So you may find it in the painting section of an art store. So I'm just gonna use a regular paintbrush and I'm going to add it right up to the edge because this piece is exactly the right size to fit all the way up to the edge. This gel medium is white in color but it dries clear. And this particular kind that I've bought is matte, meaning it's not shiny. They usually come in matte gloss, sometimes semi-gloss. And that's just about the shininess of it. Matte medium often is used in these kind of situations because it's, it's just like a glue and it dries invisible. So I've got kind of a light coating on there, not too, too heavy. And then I'm going to put some on this piece. Not too much. I want it to soak through to the front. But you want to make sure that there's enough on there that you get a really good hold. So now I'm going to place it on. It's not like a quick drying glue where you have to work fast. So you have time to even pull it off and replace it. Let's see. It's kind of 
coming over a little bit at the top here and it's just meeting at the bottom so I think I like it that way and I didn't put the glue all the way out to the edges I'm just kind of put it in this area so I'm going to let this dry because there's beads I don't want to crush them I am going to weight it but I'm going to be careful putting a book on it and a lightweight let it dry then I'm going to come back and see how I feel about the edges and maybe adding a little bit more glue. We'll see what it looks like when it's dry. But it is stuck on there now. You can see here I've got a little bit of play. So I've got a smaller brush and I'm just adding a tiny bit more glue to get that edge down. Put a little bit in there. Everything else looks like it's gripping quite well. So I'm going to add some weights and give that some time to dry. So I let this sit overnight with a book on top of it and it's completely dry. So all that's left is to sign it. And there we have a piece of slow stitched art ready to sit on a desk or a shelf or hang on a wall. And take a look what I did with this Northern Flicker. I'm gonna put a link to the video of creating this piece. So here they are, two pieces of slow stitched art. One of the things I always say is that embroidery is art. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.